Hello, everyone. I'm Kimberly Guilfoyle, along with Bob Beckel, Eric Bowling, Katie Pavlich, and Greg Guffeld. It's 5 o'clock in New York City, and this is The Five. President Obama is looking very weak as the NSA leaker Edward Snowden jumps from communist country to communist country. Now, Snowden made his great escape from Hong Kong to Russia, and now he's MIA after failing to show up for his connecting flight to Cuba. The chase is becoming an embarrassment for the Obama administration. Now, Ed Henry raised that point with Jay Carney earlier today. The administration was obviously embarrassed when you had a 29-year-old uh, person and his contractor just leak all these documents in the first place. Is the administration embarrassed now that you can't track him down, that he's uh, this cat and mouse game that's going on for all the world to see? I think I've been very uh, clear about uh, the actions we've taken and the uh, uh, our assessment of the failure of authorities in Hong Kong uh, to act uh, appropriately on a provisional arrest. We have known where he is and uh, believe we know where he is now, and, and uh, there are ongoing conversations about that. You know, beyond that, we'll have to assess as, as uh, time passes. I date tonight. Oh. So where's the president in all this? I'm here are his law professor-ish comments from this afternoon. You know, what we know is, is that uh, we're following all the appropriate legal channels uh, and working with uh, various other countries to make sure that uh, rule of law is observed. And beyond that, I'll refer to the Justice Department that has been actively involved in, in, in the case. All right, so was that a sufficient explanation, Bowling? Um, so let's talk about Jay Carney for a second. The administration is outraged that this could be happening, that, that, that Ed Snowden could actually do something that was um, interpreted as illegal, maybe unethical, who knows. Um, and then President Obama says we have to make sure we abide by the rule of law. Well, the reason why Ed Snowden did what he did is because you weren't abiding by the rule of law, Mr. President. You were violating the Fourth Amendment. You were going after Americans without... Uh, proper rule of law behind you. Constitution clearly says you have to have probable cause. There's no probable cause for most of the stuff you're doing. Look, Ed Snowden, good guy or bad guy, is certainly losing friends by doing what he's doing by hanging out with the communists. However, did he do something wrong? Probably. Did the government do something wrong? Definitely. Hmm. Comes down to a well, probably good. and a definitely, Greg. I am thoroughly confused by what you just said, but that's okay. Uh, here's my We've feeling. got an hour to explain Yeah, we get, we, um, <laughs> you know what, you know what, uh, uh, Putin right now, you got to be worried when your adversaries are so happy. When you have China laughing at you, when you have Russia laughing at you, Putin just didn't eat our lunch. He ate Obama's dog. I mean, he <laughs> is dying over this. We look like fools. I want to tell you where, what, uh, um, Snowden really is. He reminds me of the daughter in the movie Cape Fear. Unhappy with her family, unhappy with her home life, she runs into the arms of an abusive stranger, i.e. Max Cady. That's what's happening right now. He is in the arms of people who are taking great pleasure in our national security falling apart. What disgusts me more than anything is that although he was once seen as a hero, not so much, he is now a pawn. He's a pawn used by our adversaries to hurt our country. And now even the right wing of America are pawns because they decided to go for that brass ring of, of going after Obama and sacrificing the moral authority of national security just so, that, just so they can get something on Obama. And that is really disgusting what, to me. The, what's the moral authority of national security? First of all, let me just say something. Well, I, all this talk, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I'm sorry. I guess all this talk about him going to a communist country, to a communist country, <laughs> to a communist country. You know something? They say the Chinese probably debriefed him on everything, and the Russians have him over there to debrief. There's nothing to debrief on. I was in this business when I was in the White there House. There are thousands of pages that are missing, <laughs> Bob. But, the, but yeah. every, if there's not an intelligence committee in the world that doesn't understand what the NSA does. All right, let's and there's get no Katie big in, Bob. Excuse me, I didn't have a chance to finish my oh. comments. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, Katie, it's your new. Go ahead. Uh, well, the truth is, is that it's not a secret that every country is spying on every single country, right? Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean all the countries, especially the communist ones, don't have all the details. And Snowden is traveling around with his laptop for hard drives. But I think this goes back to, remember President Obama saying he would give the Russians some flexibility? And when that got transmitted to Vladimir, that didn't come as flexibility, good, we can work together. It came as good. This is an opportunity because they're weak. This, this gives us an opportunity for more power in the world and an opportunity to work with people like China and Cuba against the United States. And, Bob, you're usually critical of that situation of China and spying on I us. I can't stand so. the Chinese. Uh, so how does exist. this sit well with you? But this, here's the point. Here's the point. 
the uh, first of all, what he's got on his hard drive, and what any well, you could get, you could get it all out of me. The only question about what he's going to compromise is maybe some of the locations of the NSA intercept areas. That's all he's got. I mean, the idea what he what he but what he does have is moral standing on defending the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution. I, I think I, I agree with Eric. Now, I think he probably ought to come back. I think you ought to, you know, stand up to the thing. Maybe he'll end up going to jail, but the government will be exposed for what it is, which is inv is invading our privacy to the worst degree. And Bowling, quick comment, I, and then I, Rand Paul. I, yeah, I know. Let's we'll get to Rand in a second. But Craig, I got to tell you, it's, the, the right wing didn't go after President Obama over this. They went after the NSA for doing what they're doing. It just so happens that pres under President Obama, the NSA expanded their reach when it under was under Bush. What, well, it started under Bush, but when it became President Obama's, they went from going after foreign intelligence surveillance into let's just blanket cover a whole area of, of the country and figure out, see if we can find some stuff. And, let's not and, forget. We, don't know, Bush. and we don't know Bush. what they're going to do with all the information that, that they're sitting on. Well, that, Obama said he was going to Obama. change. Obama said he wasn't going to be the guy that surveilled uh, Americans. He was going to shut this program down. He wasn't for the, the warrantless surveillance of anyone. And so... If, that's where the hypocrisy comes in. He said he was going to change it. That's no the point he had to make. But uh, I think, again, we are confusing two programs here. One of them is PRISM. Anybody who believes PRISM is a violation of the Fourth Amendment is an idiot. There is no Fourth Amendment for foreigners. Me, there is no idiot. Fourth Amendment for foreigners. We can look at their stuff. It's called spying. If you're against spying on foreigners, I'm get not, rid of all, the I'm entire not, James I'm Bond. Not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm against, hold on. Bond I'm Bond. against using PRISM to spy on Americans. That's yeah, okay, yeah, but, yeah, but that hasn't happened for a second. I want to get you in on Rand Paul. Bob. I don't care about Rand Paul. I, listen, <laughs> here's the point. The prism thing, it used to be that we were spying on foreigners. Right. That's what the NSA was about. Right. But then when they expanded under George Bush to get these telephone companies to give them all these trunk lines they could tap into, it went to all Americans, two and that's things. a violation of the Two separate Amendment. things. Two separate things. Okay, we can two talk, separate things. But we so. can talk about uh, uh, the uh, the phone records thing as a lockbox right. in which no one's able to look in, mm -hmm. but you're confusing that with prism right now. Okay, Sorry. Well, we're, okay. we're going to take a momentary break on that, and we're going to take a listen to a bit of sound we have here. This is Rand Paul on Snowden. I do think that when history looks at this, they're going to contrast the behavior of James Clapper, our national intelligence director, with Edward Snowden. Mr. Clapper lied in Congress in defiance of the law in the name of security. Mr. Snowden told the truth in the name of privacy. For Mr. Snowden, if he cozies up to the Russian government or any of these governments that are perceived still as enemies of ours, I think that uh, that'll be a real problem for him in history. Okay. I think uh, that's a great point. I think uh, he sums it up well. Absolutely. Sums it up perfectly. Um, I, I will tell you, I've stayed in contact with um, Ed Snowden's father, Lon Snowden, and he pointed that out very, very specifically from day one. And I've talked to him countlessly, uh, hundreds, tens of times. And the issue was that he feels that Ed was too afraid to go up the chain of command when the top of the ladder at the NSA, James Clapper, was willing to lie to Congress saying, no, we're not doing any of these things, when it turns out, in fact, he knew they were doing those things. So he so that's why he, he chose couldn't that path. go that direction. That's that why he enough, did what he did. Is that a good enough Whether excuse? or not he's, he's broken the law. the law, hold on. He should, he, if he broke the law, he should serve time. Everyone agrees with that. There's no question about that. And, and, and I can understand why he would have this fear of going up his chain of command when you have these people willing to lie in front of Congress. And considering the Obama administration has a very long history of yeah. retaliating against whistleblowers, both good and bad, um, it makes sense. But he ruins his credibility because at the beginning when this happened, he came out and said, I specifically released documents surrounding the civil liberties of Americans. Mm -hmm. I don't have an interest in putting countries against each other. And now he's cozying up to communist countries he's, and he's giving the... You don't think that the Russians are sitting him down and saying, you want to get out of the country, show us your four... He's he's the Russians know right? more about what we're doing than, than Snowden does, number one. Number flying two, if you're right trying to get now. out of yeah. the, out of the <laughs> grip <laughs> of, the, of, the, of the Justice Department, of course you're going to go to Russia and you're going to go to Cuba. You're going to go to places uh, they don't uh, like uh, you. So uh, what? Greg's waving this, to people. <laughs> we better get him back involved. He's like looking out the window. This, this plays into a the, what I call the David and Goliath Kabuki Theater. Uh, people instinctually root for the little guy, David, it against Goliath. The problem with this Goliath the United States. It's the greatest country that ever was. We are not like the Goliaths of China mm -hmm. or Venezuela or Russia. We actually do good things. The people that are coming after us now, the people, the bad crowd that, that this guy this guy is hanging out with, Putin, oh, they can't show it because th this is happening because it's hurting us. Mm -hmm. It's not helping us. Um, we are throwing out the idea of good and evil and replacing it with big and little. Yeah. The little guy versus the big guy. However, the little guy is scum. 
Ecuador is a socialist problem, pocket of idiocy. But the problem but no is he's one, losing but, his but, credibility. But, yeah, absolutely. Because you're 100% you're right. He wants to be someone that stands for, okay, yes. I'm against yes. the government spying yes. on Americans and, and, and get jumping into our privacy, you know, doing God knows what yes. with his information, then come back and play as, the music and deal with right. it that as, way. As his father said from the very get-go, he said, yep. come on back, face, face your accusers, do it the right way. But, Greg, no one's saying America's not great. We're saying we don't want, or I'm saying we don't want to become like a communist China right. or an Iran, right. but or so, where, where where the freedom of the for, where your rights, your individual rights, the First Amendment, the Second Amendment, right. Fourth Amendment, are protected. Yeah, I just disagree violating. with you on the. Vi we've gone, to, God, we've gone over this, Eric. So right. yes, I, I disagree with you on the Fourth Amendment. Shut up! Shut up! Let me just say this way. I agree. By the way, I don't think he's helping his credibility going to Russia, and God knows going to China. Nobody ought to go to China. We just nobody should go there. All right. Right. But wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. So I think he ought to come back. He ought to face the music. But I think you're going to find a groundswell of people in this country who are going to support him then and he say, the NSA, you tell us what you really are doing. Then maybe we'll worry That's about okay. it. I think he, is the, he will be the Messiah to a lot of people when he comes. He certainly will be. And, and, and so in jail, why, not if he stays away. Not if he stays away. Let's listen to this bit of sound. This is Glenn Greenwald and David Gregory. Ooh. To the extent that you have aided and abetted Snowden, even in his current movements. Why shouldn't you, Mr. Greenwald, be charged with a crime? I think it's pretty extraordinary that anybody who would call themselves a journalist would publicly muse about whether or not other journalists should be charged with felonies. The assumption in your question, David, is completely without evidence, the idea that I've aided and abetted him in any way. The scandal that arose in Washington before our stories began was about the fact that the Obama administration is trying to criminalize investigative journalism. If you want to embrace that theory, it means that every investigative journalist in the United States who works with their sources, who receives classified information, is a criminal. This guy is exactly right. I don't know where Gregory's coming up doing this. The fact of the matter is, if you want to be an investigator, it was like the, it was like the Pentagon Papers. If the New York Times hadn't published them, we wouldn't have known that it, what was illegal about the Vietnam War. But listen, this guy, Gregory, to ask that question is just a hypocrite, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Falling. I, I've been after Gregory since since yesterday afternoon when he said it. it's it's absolutely insane. Glenn Greenwald, look, like him or not like him, he has a right to. He, we need more Glenn Greenwalds. That's Damn what right. we need. We don't need fewer of them. We don't need people who want to be a Glenn, Glenn Greenwald to say, hey, I'm worried about this because I'll get attacked by the president. I'll get attacked by the media, the the mainstream media, who's who's basically carrying what. Bottom line. David Gregory is carrying water for the Obama, Obama administration by asking that question. Okay. Katie. I think this was a pot meat kettle moment for David Gregory. Does anyone remember when he held up the 30 Done. round magazine yeah. in Washington, D.C., which is illegal, committing a crime in the NBC studio in Washington, D.C., and yet he's trying to tell this guy that he's aiding and abetting someone who's just been charged with espionage? With everything going on lately, that's not the position he should be taking. Let's send him to China. All right. You know what? This is uh, <laughs> an example of where being an absolutist. Is is I think a flawed place to come from. It's a, I don't think it's wise. Uh, obviously, David Gregory looked incredibly foolish, especially with that hair. But and, <laughs> and it was a it was a bad question. However, Greenwald is is has never done any kind of breakthrough uh, investigative journalist about our adversaries. He doesn't have to though. That's not what he has to do. He can do whatever he wants, and he shouldn't be prosecuted or anything. But the fact is, he was published in the Guardian, the most hardcore left wing anti American newspaper you will ever find on this planet. So, and I think he's out of his depth now because I don't. The more, the more that uh, uh, Snowden pals around with people who hate America, the more foolish he's going to look. Although he's perfectly right. This guy is his source. He's writing articles. That's what he does. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think, the, I guess what I'm saying is, being an absolutist on either side, you're going to lose. Very yeah. well if said. If he does come back here, he's going to be <laughs> Did I make any sense? Yes, it did. It made sense. Him. You know, it really is. He can stand on moral principle and ethical ground, but he's going to be on a troubled legal waters if he comes back here. More to come on The Five, including a surprise announcement from actor Jim Carrey. He's starring in the new movie, Kick-Ass 2, but won't promote it because he thinks it's too violent. I wonder if he's going to get back his paycheck. Mm -hmm. Well, producers say they are baffled, but Mr. Gutfeld apparently isn't confused. His thoughts? Upcoming. <laughs> Stay right there. Yes, I feel like this when my baby me
Welcome back, everybody. A huge bill on Capitol Hill today. The Senate about to vote on a massive immigration reform bill, and the two sides couldn't be more split. I'm not talking about Democrats and Republicans. I'm talking about the establishment GOP and the conservative right. Listen to Senator Lindsey Graham going all old school. The bill will pass. I think we're on the verge of getting 70 votes. That is my goal. It has always been my goal. Uh, we're very, very close to 70 votes. Your goal, Senator? You're really in a rush to give amnesty to 11 million future Democrats, are you? Well, thank goodness for guys like this. Senator Rand Paul sums up conservatives in 10 seconds. It'll pass the Senate, but it's dead on arrival in the House. The House is much closer to me, and I think they think border security has to come first before you get immigration reform. All right, we'll bring it around the table. KG, what do you think of this? Uh, the, the right is now kind of split on immigration reform. Yeah, I think it's interesting. I think, it, one, it shows that they know that they have to do something on this issue if they want to remain in the game, be relevant, and try and win some big elections, starting with a presidential election. They're going to have to be the party that is seen as being, uh, you know, inclusive. But at the same time, they can't alienate their base by not focusing on security. People are very concerned. The border should be... What good is it if you're going to deal with immigration here if we're letting still people come in and violate border uh, laws? So you're sticking with the, for the right, the Rand Pauls, the Senator Cruz, who say, close the border first. Uh, Becca, where are you on this? The name's Bob, by the way. Um, the uh, Where I am is that there's going to be this Republican amendment by those two uh, conservative guys that is going to put more border security in. It's going to pass. Everybody's going to have all the border security they want. It's going to get 70 votes. It's going to the House. I don't care what the House wing nuts do about it. They're going to get some bill out of there. There's too much pressure. There's going to be a bill. Obama's going to sign it. We're going to have immigration reform. The period. fix is in, Katie. It, the fix <laughs> is in, Katie Pavlich. Um, Bob says it's going to go past the Senate. It's going to go to the House. House is going to come up with their version. It's going to go to conference. And then... They're going to get I don't what they think want. So. I think the Gang of Eight has been a royal waste of time, a huge waste of time for everyone. And a lot of the issues that are most important haven't been addressed. You had the ICE union come out today and say, vote against the amendment, vote against the bill. They've been saying it for a long time. That's the major problem here is the interior enforcement, not just border security. And the latest amendment waters down the border security that we were already supposed to have and waters down the 2006 uh, fence amendment. So when you have people like John McCain saying when he was trying to get reelected, you know, build the day fence and now all of a sudden he's willing to pass this out with a, a less of a fence it's really disappointing okay mm -hmm. I, I, you know i hate big bills but enough about o'reilly uh anything that's over a certain you know weight is done to overwhelm you and scam you there's no way in hell every senator read that bill we know that mm -hmm. and we start finding out things about this that are really interesting for example there's a paragraph in there mm -hmm. that says that they can actually change their mind on the fence if they find that it's not feasible or if it's homeland not, security yeah. can change their mind yeah the anytime they want right. so we talk we're, every, which is uh, unilateral everybody wants something very simple they want a border and they want a process you can do that on one page it should be the the the, board, the, the bill should be able to be rolled up into your hand like that mm -hmm. it shouldn't be a thousand pages you mean just like health care? Yeah, and you can't lie. You can't, you know, serve me anti-freeze and tell me it's Gatorade and not tell me that, because by telling me this is saving money, it's, it's going to be, for every uh, dollar of taxes paid, each immigrant's going to get $2.40 in benefits. So we're going to be in the red, $54 billion a year. Can I just throw this full screen yeah. up very quickly? In the bill, mind you, they're going to get probably 70 senators to vote for this. In the bill, $100 million to promote things like Vegas, baby, $1.5 billion in stimulus for kids, a job stimulus package, and competitive chess players are going to get visas, whatever the hell McCaskill means with that one. Kimberly, yeah, thank goodness we get the chess players. They should. <laughs> Greg's right. Read the damn well, darn bill. Well, that's the problem. And so when you, when you get down to it, it should be like a one-pager, so it's very obvious, it's transparent, it doesn't have hidden things in it that are, yep. you know, paybacks for constituents or whoever. Establish a border on bills. You know something? Yes. A border that's this big, and fence. it's got to fit in there. Hey, can I, can I, I educate that on that you? That was weird. Can I you non-Washington people? Educate. Yes. <laughs> Nobody reads complete bills. All these bills. True. Well, this should. one amendment is over. Th they should. Yes. Over 1,000 a a thousand pages. Yeah, the one amendment's amendment. 119 pages, triple space. It's but not listen, a thousand But it pages. doesn't, you're going to have to have more than the, the one page. It's going to be a lot, and the people don't read it. They go along with what the motions are, and there's going to get, this thing's going to get passed. Why I it's guarantee you. What? That's why it's a waste of time. It's because people don't read it. They pass stuff they don't know about, and then we go back and try to sift through the bureaucracy they created without even knowing they did it in the first place. Why didn't we have the mortgage mess? 
because Americans didn't want to read even a 12-page mortgage contract. And even mm -hmm. e even uh, McCain said that we could have solved so many problems with a mortgage mess if a mortgage was one page you long. Do, you Why don't do we do that yours. with bills? You, you didn't want mortgage? to read yours. You asked me in bowling what was in it. What kind of <laughs> Does anybody read that? their mortgage? Exactly. we got to learn to read, people. Well, they're, they're wrapping us. we got to go. Coming up, anti-gun crusader Jim Carrey didn't mind collecting a big, fat paycheck for playing a gun-wielding vigilante in his new movie, Kick-Ass 2, until it was time to promote the film. Now the hypocrite is moonwalking the film, The Five Reacts. And later, a stuntman's prayers were answered during a tense tightrope walk over the Grand Canyon. In case you missed it last night, we'll show you his death-defying walk. And you're not going to believe what he wants to try next. Katie actually wrote this cover story, just so you know. <laughs> no, I didn't. Yes. I think Elizabeth Meineke wrote that story for us, our magazine editor. So. Does it really matter? All right. <laughs> no. Jim Carrey announced no. that he cannot support his new flick, Kick-Ass 2, due to its violent content. He cites his change in hearts in Sandy Hook and apologized to others involved with the film. Well, good for him and lucky for him, too, oh that a genius like Jim can make conscious-based decisions long after such movie violence has brought him great fame and wealth. It's like a star in his 40s denouncing vaccines only after getting the polio shot when he was a kid. Sound familiar, Jim? And how odd his conscience bothers him now when it's time to promote the picture. Sorry, an attention-seeking celeb suddenly wants to shut up. I think it has more to do with avoiding publicity than principles. Or maybe he's really learned the benefits of restraint. Remember his tragic, unfunny anti-gun video that danced on the grave of Charlton Heston, one of the great movie stars and civil rights activists of our time? That hateful video was way worse than the harmless fantasy of Kick-Ass 2, and it soiled Carrie for tens of millions of Americans forever. Maybe he got that. I doubt it. To him, politics is fashion. Oh, what to wear this month. But it's good he apologized to his movie crew for his decision affects everyone on that film, from the co-stars who make far less than he does to the writers and the gophers. Although I doubt it alleviates their anger over him dissing their work, his soothed conscience pays no mortgage. <laughs> what are you, what is but going on? What is going on while you're doing all of that? Oh, you look over and Bob's like beauty school drama. He's like this and he's looking at my compact. He was like, trying to, yeah, like, you know what he was doing? He was trying to ruin my vibe. That's what he was trying to oh do. That's exactly what I was what doing. Doing. All right, Admiring KG, since you're already talking, look isn't it unfair to the crew of the film to rag on a movie as it's coming out? It'd be like if the five started and all of a sudden I go, oh, God, I hate that show. That's what he did to these people. Or you go, I hate that segment. Yeah. Yeah, that's happening. <laughs> okay. So, ah, gotcha. Okay, so I've worked on movies in a variety of different roles, and one of them, one Back of those the, roles. Uh, ooh, <laughs> that's really? in Germany. <laughs> Not those weren't kind you of in some shows. of those Valley or what? <laughs> oh, Whoa. Oh, yes. Geez. Anyway, so I know what it's like. I've done everything from, you know, having a speaking role yeah. to being what I guess maybe what you call a gopher or. <laughs> speaking roles. My point is this going. <laughs> <laughs> to being an extra. So yes. it's not fair. I get, you know, yeah. what he does has a direct economic impact, unfortunately, on the film, the people who rely on this for their well being, their financial livelihood. So, but this is just more of him trying to get attention on Twitter and being ridiculous and reckless. And the guy just has no center. He's just all over the place. Bob, what do you think? Is this a product, a product of a guy who just moves in and out of political issues because? He has nothing else to do? I, th I think it's probably going to be a dog of a movie, and so he's trying to lower expectations. But, uh, <laughs> but listen, the fact of the matter is that if he is impacting on these other people's uh, welfare, it's not as if there's, there's not a lot of violent movies out all the time. What, are we kidding ourselves? Just because he's got a violent movie, there'll be another one next week, there'll be another one the week after that. What difference does it make? I think what he's trying to do is he knows he's got a dog of a movie, and he wants to try to get out behind yes, anything. Exactly, exactly my opinion it's completely. That, there, there was absolutely no buzz. No buzz about that movie before he decided right. to do this. Now all of a sudden, people like us are putting him on TV, saying, "Oh, what's that movie going to be all about?" Greg I, I, I agree. His career. I think what he's actually helping the people who work yeah. on that film because he yeah. maybe made that film a little bit relevant. I think he should take the money he pays his armed bodyguards outside his home yeah. and pay the people who don't make as much and pay the people he's ruining this movie for. But. 
on the hypocrisy side, where was he? Aurora happened before this movie was made. Columbine happened before this movie was made. Chicago happens every single day before mm. this movie was made. Where was he then? Detroit. Why is it yeah. now? Yeah, it's never about the handgun crime, is it? No, it's never about the handgun crime in the in the cities with the most gun control ever. He has but, all those guns and bodyguards. He's very worried about Greg Gutfeld, but you know, come on. I would be without too. a step ladder. I've been you living can't in his front yard for This guy's got bodyguards for what? He Bob, where apparently you thinks that they're important. Hey, can we... And he pays armed bodyguards to sit outside of his house you while he tells all of us of that we <laughs> <laughs> well, come on. Can we talk about Madonna? Madonna oh, supposed to say that. Madonna was on uh, Good Morning America and they talked to her about guns. Let's check it out. Is that a bad word? But that choreography drew criticism, with the first act of her tour relying heavily on the use of guns. Did you ever think about not including that in the movie? No, that's like that would be like asking people to not have guns in action movies. I mean, the thing is Guns don't kill people, people kill people. There were several movies that delayed releases because of the shootings, for example, at Sandy Hook Elementary School. So there wasn't right. any doubt or, or any hesitation. Well, that's not going to change the situation. This all comes from fear and ignorance and, and um, people not really raising their children and paying attention to what's going on. So Eric, she just echoed the NRA like yeah. slogan, guns <laughs> she's, she's channeling her her inner conservative. You got love Madonna for that. Had, like glass wow. eyes. Like he has a crush I'm on her in now. Love good good yeah. job, Madonna. Material yeah, in girl. The tank, going Madonna, all in the tank. Perfect. Your Amen, career's on Madonna. the slide too. So you got to try to coach no, up the right not. wingers. I don't think she. I don't know if she. That's exactly what she meant <laughs> though. <laughs> what she well, said. It's out of fear. We did that. Yeah, we did. But it's like out of fear and ignorance. I think she was just throwing words together. I don't know. She made perfect sense to me. I say amen, Madonna. Your career is so much better than Lady if Gaga. If she made sense to you, that means that, well, certainly better than Lady Gaga. I don't know who Lady Gaga is, but apparently she's uh, she's somebody big. And who you cares? met her. Oh, that's right. You I met, met her. I met her. I said, what do you do? Oh, that's right. I said, what do you do? <laughs> I've never heard this story before, um, have you? Justin Bieber, <laughs> hey, Lady just Gaga, off my Rihanna. <laughs> All right. This is falling apart before our eyes. Coming up, the high wire act that I could have easily done myself if I had the right shoes, but I was busy and it was Sunday and I rest. Where is Nick Willenda off to next? And will he continue to wear tacky jeans? Jeans to work. Find out straight ahead. You could do it if you wore your burns. He's going the distance. He's going for speed. She's all alone. All alone. All alone in a time of need. Because he's racing and racing and plotting the course. Brother Bellas in the back. Sweet singers in the front. Well, he's done it again. Daredevil Nick Walenda, also known as King of the High Wire, Wire, wowed the world again yesterday with his 22-minute tightrope walk across the Grand Canyon without a harness and with a lot of prayer. Thank you, Lord. Wow, it's a long way down. Yeah, it is, but you take your time, man. I am. So, what did his family think about the stunt? It's amazing watching him do this because no one else ever even thinks of doing this. That's for sure. Well, Nick is already planning out his next one. He's hoping to walk between the Chrysler and Empire State Buildings right here in New York City. Wow, well, what do you think? I get nervous I think just he's watching out of his him. Mind, yeah, I know. Is what I think. No, I tell you, but I got an idea. Instead of the Chrysler and the Empire State Building, I think he should walk between the Freedom Tower, the brand new Freedom Tower, and the Statue of Liberty, and somehow figure it out engineering-wise, and let him do that. It'd be great. Great idea. Well, Great idea. His yeah. biggest concern was the I wind. I think that's wonderful. Yeah, I mean, the wind, I'm scared of the wind, too. I mean, terrible on the Are hair. Are you scared of the wind? <laughs> well, you when you go it. outside and the wind comes, you I know, because your oh hair gets God. messed up, right? <laughs> can, I, can I be the only person that says I don't like this? Why? Because I know, because everybody loves this. All right, it's and, a, I, I find it to be a weird way to deliver a poll to somebody who lives on a cliff. <laughs> there are easier ways to do that. I hate Daredevil. Look at Bob's face. Okay, can You're I just, just, can just, I just say something very grim? That's What's new? That Saturday, a woman died in a stunt airplane crash in Ohio. Right. Two people died. Nobody focused on that. What you do is you focus on this. Daredevils are tempting fate, and we applaud that, and he's praying. Meanwhile, there are plenty of people who aren't tempting fate 
who are dying every day. Right. I find dareviling to be a Reckless. waste of my time. So, can I take it a different? But I did love watching it. Yeah, I love watch, watching it. Watch it. He was probably <laughs> paid a lot, <laughs> and uh, Discovery Channel probably had amazing ratings. Yep. Um, but he, you know, all the way across, he was, praying, he was like, "Praise God, thank you, Jesus. Praise God, thank you, Jesus." Um, no atheists in foxholes are 1,500 feet above the Grand Canyon. My question is, maybe he was trying to deliver the message, and I hope he was. Yeah, maybe. And he did a great job doing it. I can, I can be hopeful that. By the way, I said but that. But do you think I, God was going? I tweeted going... that, and I, the haters came out. Yeah. Greg, I can't tell how many people hated me for saying, for tweeting what I just said. Do you think God hated? is like going, you know what? I have stuff. Almost bigger and better things hit. right now. I have like people dying over here and I've got starvation. You're a daredevil. You're tempting fate. I think you can handle that. I Listen, love it. Hey, I, think, Kate, I like that he, this was a family affair. His mom made his shoes. Mm. I mean, look at that. What if he fell in front of them? No family affair there. They've had families, family you know, members die before. Hey, Listen, you, so have you guys been you to know. the Grand Canyon where that Indian tribe has put a plastic a complete plastic thing out over the canyon. And I think you, it's, it's glass. But. It's all gla <laughs> glass, whatever it is, it's glass. And you walk out there and you're looking straight down and then the side, the walls are all glass too. I got out about one foot and I threw up. I bet. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. That Perfect. must have been great. That yeah. was real, not very good Should for the glass. Money back. See, I would never do something like this, although Dana tweeted that uh, Andrea and I could walk this tightrope in our heels, which some Probably people true. were interested <laughs> in doing. Yes, but not on a windy day. But I don't know. I'm too I no, on a windy day, be really important about life and seeing too many people die that I, I would hate to see what this would could do to us. I think your chances are probably just as high getting in your car and driving to work. You think so? Yeah, I really Walking do. across the Grand Canyon? Yeah. Uh, uh, well, you know. He's a trained professional. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> you know, did you see what was on after? Yeah, after this? Bad. Naked and Afraid, which was a new survival show where people went out into the woods completely naked. Did you? Strangers. Strangers. Oh, right. <laughs> they most they can't wear any clothes. Yes. Strangers. Would yes. you hate to be the cameraman? You have to sit there and, and also, they, they, have, they have to keep, what do you call it when you have, when you have digitize, digitize yeah. everything and thank God Shouldn't for Shouldn't you be working on your next idea. book instead of watching such a <laughs> frivolous fair? What a great idea. Did they all get survived? Survive? Well, it's only two people for 21 days. All right. Well, we'll ugly? stop talking okay. about the, Adam the naked Eve. folks. But uh, <laughs> right here ahead on the five, the Supreme Court issues an important ruling on affirmative action, but are race-based admission programs still necessary in 2013? That debate, next on the five. Stay with us. We all remember the great Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech on August of 1963 in Washington, D.C., but a lot of people don't know that he actually delivered his first dream speech two months prior in front of a huge crowd in Detroit at the Great March to Freedom. My dad was there, fortunately. Yesterday marked 50 years since that day. Here's Dr. King. I have a dream that one day, right down in Georgia and Mississippi and Alabama, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be able to live together as brothers. I have a dream this afternoon. God, it makes me just, uh, I, I, you're the greatest man I, I think worked, walked the face of the earth next to Jesus Christ. Uh, the, uh, Greg, do you think 50 years later now there still is the need for some affirmative action? Well, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting because I was looking at that and you just think about Detroit. And, and, and what has happened in, in, the, in these last 40, 50 years with Detroit, uh, the civil rights movement for 2013, uh, President Obama has an obligation to preach that determination beats dependency. He's got the bully pulpit, and he's not using it, I think, as, as efficiently as he could. He should be talking about achievement and success as the best ladder for your kids to, to, to climb, not dependency. I, I just wish you could do more, that's all. Okay, Katie, do you think if there is any place where affirmative action is necessary in America anymore? Well, the Supreme Court bumped it back to the, yeah. to the, to the lower, lower court. No, they, they, and, um, that's right. And so, you know, they clearly think that the lower court has some more explaining to do and it needs to be hashed out more. But I think that we've seen that it's been used a little bit um, against whites now. Uh, I know a bunch of people who getting into college were discriminated against despite their character, despite their good grades, despite their SAT scores, didn't get into the schools that some of their colleagues did with less of grades and lesser of, of those scores. And yeah, so but, I think that looking at it across the board, and whether it's being used properly 
as it was intended is what they need to look Let's at. Let's remember for 400 years we kept these people enslaved and in chains. I think making up for it by a few white people not getting into school as well. Making up for it by judging people by their skin color instead of their no, character. No, by, I don't by, think by, by being sure that. that they have an equal opportunity. If yeah, anybody at, at believes there's point, an equal opportunity in this country for that, blacks and whites At what point, Bob, is it okay to hurt other kids that have worked really hard and deserve to get into it, good schools if too? The, if there has been a the, long history. And I qualified for affirmative action. I didn't need it. That's I didn't you're use Puerto it. Rican. No, it was under the hot clause. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know that. Listen, I, do I think that there should be a, wh a white kid should not be allowed into college and make room for a black kid? I think that that's unfair. I agree with that. On the other hand, when you have institutions that have, for hundreds of years, denied blacks entrance, at some point you've got to make some decisions, and that decision ought to weigh at least somewhat on their admittance. Well, look, the president is African-American, the attorney general is African-American, uh, former secretary of state Condoleezza Rice is African-American. We've come to a point where we have all achieved as human beings in the United States the highest levels of office. And I don't think that it's fair or just to judge people on the admission table and say, oh, we need a black kid to certify. We need a Hispanic girl to certify that we're diverse instead of looking at whether their, where their character you, is you, the best. Eric, do you believe that a uh, baby born to a crack mother in Harlem last night has an equal chance of life as a white a baby born to a white oh, couple in West Texas? And I've always, that you've asked me this in the past, and I've said it in the past. Yes, you have the equal opportunity mm -hmm. to succeed. That's what America is, providing everyone with an equal opportunity. That's what a it is. Equality of opportunity, not, not a result. Not, as Katie points out, um, skewing or, or biasing the opportunity towards people who have a certain skin uh, color. I, I that's look, where the... If I was sure the, that that's that's that crack baby that you don't like to hear, hear about, if we were, that baby should provide uh, the clothing, housing, health care, everything necessary until they're 18 years old, their parents well, get afforded. Why is that? And then they should be crack yeah, baby. Bob, judging oh, someone by the... Crack. Yeah, because... because and, and by the way... Because they're black or because they're born to crack? I mean, I'm not sure what you're... Is, it, yeah, is it white crack babies? Yeah. I'm just trying I, to... Judging someone by the skin color black crack color baby, and we all have a responsibility to care for that child. Well, what about the white crack What about the rest really? of the babies? Hold on, hold on. We should, this we should, is such... we should have responsibility to take care of them, too. So you're making my point, not your point. No, I'm not. If, 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 you're, if we're going to take care of black crack babies, if, if, we should if take you care think, of white crack babies, If you believe that there is equal opportunity... If you believe that everybody in this country has equal opportunity, then I... Somebody pull out. Somebody's got to get the science on court. crack babies. Uh, okay, we listen. Go. Let, let's not make fun of crack babies. One <laughs> more thing is up next. That's special time. Time now for one more thing. Kitty. Well, during a routine traffic stop in South Texas, we saw some monkey business. And this next story is why people should not have monkeys as pets. Oh God, I told you. Uh, can you stop right here? Oh. No, 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 no. Here, just hand that to me. <laughs> and oh rabies shots yes. for him. I, Did he wow. him? I told you. Bit I had a hand. monkey in my, as a pet, and they're the worst things in the world. I know. How? You, okay, but that's another story. Okay. Very <laughs> sick and twisted. Emma. Okay, so Saturday, San Diego County, California. Check this out. This is amazing. Go ahead. We'll roll the video. The SPCA, uh, they raised 20000 bucks surfing dogs, small medium, and, small, medium, and large group dogs, Twenty grand to the ASPCA. you got to love the dogs, especially the surfing dogs. Yeah. All right. Aww. That's it. Here's Jasper. All right. All right. Uh, President Obama actually ordered a CDC report on gun use, and it just came out. Slate has a really good piece on it, a summary on it. Uh, one of the more important points is almost all national survey estimates indicate that defensive gun use by victims are at least as common as offensive uses by criminals, with estimates of annual uses ranging from a half a million to more than three million a year. That's amazing, and that it, this is incredible stuff. We should talk about it tomorrow. Okay. We should. Bo Ricky Bobby. Okay. Uh, keep it on the gun issue. July 1st, the new law goes into effect in Mississippi, giving residents the right, now listen to this, to carry firearms openly without the need for a gun permit to go into effect. This is getting ridiculous. The cops down there don't like it. The idea you're going to have anybody, you don't have to have any war, you don't have to have any license, you have nothing. You just carry a gun around, walk around Mississippi, and walk around and get drunk what's in that a bar. See what's what that voice? Oh, Bob? that was not nice, Bob. That was offensive. Oh, the hell with it. Typical. It's crazy. Okay. Did you I brought voices? to you by the National Rifle Association. Okay, I well, point out. Amen. Bob's a little bit cranky, so maybe he needs some sweet. I'm not cranky now. at all. I just yeah, think you... the idea that they're doing this is just nuts. They do it in Arizona, okay, Bob, and it's fine. Bob, my one more thing. Okay, you one more thing. 
related to you. You ruined our moment. Okay, Twinkies, baby, are making a comeback. Oh, you stole that from me. Mm -mm, July 15th. So remember Bob loved these so much, he was shoving them all in his mouth. He threw up after throw up. eating a Twinkie shake. <laughs> <laughs> they're the greatest things in the world. Thank God they're oh, back. That almost killed we you, Bob. love us some Twinkies at the five. Let me tell you, and the cheddar. <laughs> I was been fun. Nice having you here, Katie. Thanks um, for having that's me. That's it. So for some serious news, special report is up next. What do you mean for some serious news? <laughs>